Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Wolves of Shadowed Fate Episode 27 Chapter 144-148 Graham's POV Where did a freaking vampire come from? He was so quick I never even saw him coming to be able to step back away from him. His nails were digging into my neck, and I could feel the strength coming from him. This was no freshly turned vampire. This one had rank, and he was angry. Very angry, and I had no idea why. I have done nothing at all to him. Cheryl is Blake's mate, and he should have been the one to jump in to protect her. My eyes slide to where Blake was standing, and he is pissed off as he glares over and sees what this bloodsucker is doing. I wish I could smile, but I cannot take a breath to fill my lungs. I almost wished he would end me, so I don't have to live through the punishment that Blake was going to be giving me, so I am fine with how this is turning out. Blake was growling at Anton for defending Cheryl before he could and it seems like this vampire might be interested in her. What has happened in less than a week? But here I am lifted in the air about to meet the goddess with the rousing defense of this vampire, all for the sake of Cheryl. The vampire suddenly lets me go, and I drop to the floor, with my lungs filling with the precious air I needed to breathe. I have to grab my neck to check and see if I am bleeding. I am struggling to breathe and I swear it feels like his hand is still wrapped around my neck. He was strong, and I my mind was telling me to move, that I need to get away from the bars, but my body was frozen in fear at this sudden attack. I do not want his nasty undead hands on me again. He let go of me to go and grab the chair at the desk for Cheryl. He then gently assisted her onto it before Blake could stop leaning against the wall. I started scrambling back and Crab walked away from the bars. I didn't care how stupid I looked, I just didn't want him to be able to reach me again. He wanted to kill me, and I could tell it was because he liked Cheryl. That is ridiculous, we do not date those nasty creatures. They are not worthy of us at all, even Cheryl's stupid self. They are dead for the goddess's sake but I could tell he was angry at my threat to her, and he was not playing around. My throat hurt, and I was done with this visit. I want them to leave. I deserve some sort of protection from this kind of filth, Blake. How could you let a dirty bloodsucker on our pack land? I managed to get out, but that freak show had hurt me, badly. I already know that my throat was bruised. I swear it felt like his handprint was going to stay imprinted on my throat because he grabbed me so hard. Please leave my maid alone, Anton. She only needs me to take care of her. Thank you for defending her, but I will do it in the future Blake told the vampire. I cannot stop my smirk. I think I will get him fired up at the vampire and see what happens then. I am safe in here so it won't be me getting hurt, it will be one of them that will get hurt when the fight starts at least I can get one more dig in between him and Cheryl again. Yes, she is Blake's mate. There is no need for you to ever touch her again. No self-respecting she-wolf would ever consider dating a parasite like you. You need to leave her alone before Blake has to force you to leave. You are not welcome here at Black Moon Pack I told the vampire with a smirk. I was going to give this leech as hard a time as I could, so I can get Blake fired up again. Cheryl looks better than she did when she left here, but she is still clearly frail, and I will not let this opportunity pass me by. It is the last chance for me to hurt her again, and I am going to be taking it. I was surprised to see that he acted as if he could care less though, and he gave me the same smirk I had given him back to me. He didn't seem concerned at all about what I had said. He then opened his mouth and said, So are you speaking as a member of the pack? Or as the mouthpiece for Blake? 
Blake's whole demeanor changed at that moment. It went from me firing Blake up, to the leech letting Blake know that I was taking over again. Blake's eyes narrowed on me and he took a step towards my cell. Before he could open his mouth, I could hear several voices shrieking out about being brought back to the cells. Why are they back here? Didn't they get used as prey to lure the bloodsuckers in? They were all supposed to be dead now. I could not contain the groan of frustration as they got brought back down to their cells. They are going to be just as annoying as they were before, and I didn't want to hear it. Goddess, he should kill them all now, because they are not worth storing down here with me. I will mention that to Blake, but not as if I wanted them to die, but in an I see you are letting them live after disrespecting your Luna kind of way. Blake is easy to manipulate. He hates disrespect of any kind, just like I do. He will take care of them soon after that, and I try to calm back down. I will take care of it later, no hurry now. Clearly these women in front of me, all have something they want to say. Well too bad for them, because I am done dealing with the lot of them. We all heard it when the one in front of the group being put back into their cells caught sight of Cheryl. That was all it took for her to start up, what are you doing here? You are the one who should be in a cell, not us. You killed three members of the pack, how do you still have your freedom? The others were quick to look over to see her too, and the nasty comments started up. They did not stop until Blake walked over to their cells and started yelling at them, you can all shut up. She was the one to beg me to spare your worthless lives. She was the one who said that you shouldn't be used as prey. She even pointed out that you were all used by Graham, just like we were. She advocated for you, and you are just so vile that you attacked her right off the bat. I will tell each and every one of you, that you have one week to live. You are still going to be put to death, but feel free to take it out on Graham each and every day, of your last week until your sentence is carried out. Do not forget that Kara was not an innocent victim either. She just got her punishment a little earlier than you are getting yours. I will tell you now that if any of you speak to Cheryl like you just did again, I will get the pack doctor down here. Each of you will be donating some blood to the vampires that are here right now. I promise you that if the words you speak are as ugly as what was just said that I will have him drain you dry, and you can die today. Am I clear? They must have nodded to him in response, as none of them spoke again, but he seemed content with what they had done to respond to him. Blake walked back to my cell and looked me dead in the eyes as he said, Your days of speaking for the pack, or for me, are over and done with. Your punishment starts tomorrow, Graham. I will spend tonight thinking of a good start to it just so you know how serious I am about your punishment. You will not be getting out of this. There will be no easy death for you. I plan on making you suffer each and every day until Cheryl forgives me for what I did to her. I plan on making sure that I make the punishment fit the crime you committed, and that Kevin gets his justice from you too. I will never come down alone, and if I go too far and they think I am going to kill you, they are supposed to stop me. I will make sure that the pack doctor keeps a crash cart down here, for just such an emergency. Because I do not want you dead, Graham. I want you to suffer, over and over again, until you welcome the comfort that only death will provide you. You will get used to seeing me, down here to tend to you each day. You will get no break because you never gave either of them one. I want you to know it, and I wanted Cheryl to know it too. I want her back. I need her back with me. If I start to lose it because of your heinous plans, then thankfully I will just come down here to take it out on you. Know this though, no one will be coming to rescue you. You will stay here until you die, even the council is good with the plan I have submitted to them. Thankfully. Cole and Raven supported my plan, 
so I have every right in the world to carry it out, as I see fit. We dropped our charges of you being wanted for trial, for you to be punished here at Black Moon. Both Raven and I were all right with it. You have earned every bit of what you are about to receive. The best part is that we both know that Blake will not let you get away with any of it. Each day as he slips further down that slippery slope, you will be his whole focus. You made your cruel plan up so well, that there was no coming back from it. So, congratulations to you Graham. You kept improving your cruel plans until you finally ripped a family apart. For no reason other than you are the most spiteful person I know. You should be disgusted by all you have done. I only asked you for one thing, when you took Cassandra away from me, as your own. You couldn't even do that. Your current situation is all because of the bad choices that you made and continued to make Cole said to me, and my anger pours out before I can stop it. Meeting Cassandra was a happy accident. You were the one who messed up there. You slept with her, and then left her alone? You should have marked her, so that was on you. If you had just taken another minute to do so, none of this would have happened. You need to accept some blame here too, Cole. You act like I put her over my shoulder like a caveman and ran away with her. That is not what happened at all. You made bad decisions too that fateful night too. Stop acting like I was the only one who messed up I fired back at him. Yes, I screwed up. But he left one of the most beautiful she-wolves that I have ever seen in my life, just sitting there alone. She was sitting there crying, and clearly upset. How could I not take a shot at trying to pursue her and make her mine? It is not my fault that she immediately fell for my charm. Did Cassandra and I make some bad choices, yeah, we did. But we did love each other. I just wish it didn't leave me at a severe disadvantage, especially with a powerful neighbor. The chance of him finding out what I had done was always looming over my head and causing me concern. But I will never admit that I was worried about it for a minute. Stop blaming others for your own mistakes Graham. You always have an excuse for everything that you do, and try to provide a reason for it. For once in your life, admit that something is your fault because in this case, it is. You would not be in this situation if you had just given Raven to me after she was born. You would have then raised Regan as your heir with no rivalry between them. Regan might have learned to be more like her mother, than you, which would have been better for her. Because I already know she buttering up to you because she wanted that Luna position. She knew you could give it to her, she knew where the power lay between you and Cassandra. Maybe the goddess wouldn't have prevented you from having another child. You could have had a son who was over your pack right now. So many opportunities were missed all because of you, Graham. You were the main factor in all of it. The goddess knew what you had done, and she was angry. She had plans for Cassandra and me, and you enticed her with all you were going to do for her, to win her over. I still find it amusing that she fell for it. I have always done better in business than you. I had a bigger pack, more money, more pack members, and more businesses than you. You must have been frantic to keep her from realizing her mistake in picking you, over me. She picked you to get stuff and she would have had everything she ever wanted in life if she had decided to stay with her true mate. I mentioned this because I want you to get the point I am trying to make. It doesn't matter how well your plans are laid out, or how brilliant they may be. You cannot outrun the penalties of your actions. You probably think you can, or come up with a logical excuse for it, to try to wiggle your way out from under it. But karma is a bh. The goddess was never going to let this go and your ignorant A**s keep racking up the payment that you were going to receive from it. That payment got to be so large, that your mate ended up having to pay some of it too. She had a part in all of this as well, 
she was not innocent, and she allowed you to go too far. She may not have been as bad as you are, but she knew better than to make choices like she did, all for monetary gain. She turned her back on Raven being abused, she should have taken her and left. She knew where I was, and could have brought her to me at any time. I would have taken care of both of them, but she didn't. She stood back and watched. She watched my innocent daughter who was a child be hurt, repeatedly. You may not have physically hurt her yourself, but you allowed others to do it. Don't think that makes you noble, or innocent of it, we both know that you kept your hands off of her because you knew it would be certain death for you if I ever found out that you had hurt her. So, just in case you were wondering. Yes, you are indeed the reason for Cassandra's death, Graham. All that you spew cannot negate that fact. Cassandra knew it was wrong too, all that she did, so I know why she allowed poor Cheryl here to do what she had to do. Cassandra probably knew that Cheryl needed to escape the nightmare that her life had become. You caused it all, it started when you took Cassandra, you did get this whole thing started Cole told me. I have never been spoken to like this before in my life. Normally this type of blatant disrespect would have resulted in death but we both know in a fight, I wouldn't have been able to beat him. He is unbelievably harsh in what he was saying, but it suddenly hits me that he is right. That night when I met Cassandra started off a chain of events that did start me doing others dirty too. He did have more money than me, and I had to make sure I kept my money strong, or she may find out what a huge mistake she made. I started changing up contracts, and hiding clauses so I would always come out on top. I never really cared for others much anyway, but for Cassandra, I was willing to do anything. But I will never admit it, I will die first before I will accept the fact that I was the very reason that I was in this cell right now. I did what I had to do to win, but I was never able to be more successful than Cole. I still hate that. It makes me angry to think about all the blessings that he was given, that I wasn't. All the rank true mates that he received, while I was only given a lowly warrior, who was not acceptable at all to me. He has wonderful children, who have taken over his pack, and the transition was seamless. How did he get to be so blessed, and I have nothing now? That was not right at all, it was not fair to me. I deserved more, I deserved to be better than him. I hate that he stands there like he is just waiting for an epiphany to hit me. I will never admit that any of my life choices were bad, or wrong. They are over and done now, and there is nothing that I can do about them now. Actually there is I heard someone say to me from outside my cell. What are you talking about? I asked with a frown on my face. Why did they just pop up with that comment when no one here was speaking? Who was he even speaking to? There is something that you can do now, Graham, I watched as that freaking vampire stepped back up to my cell. He can read minds. I suddenly realized that I got played. He wasn't here to take care of Cheryl, he was here to help them when they spoke to me. Blake, I am done here. Please make them all leave. I refuse to speak to any of them any longer I said as I laid down on my cot with my back facing them. It didn't matter if they left or not. I am done with the lot of them. Chapter 145 Cheryl's POV I think not, Graham. I didn't get my turn to speak to you, and I will not be leaving here until I get that opportunity. I will not be coming back for any reason after this. I could care less if you respond to me or not, but regardless, you will have to listen to what I am going to say Cheryl said in a hard tone, and Blake growled in a low tone when he heard that. I glanced over at him and he had a great deal of pain on his face, but I have to harden my heart to it. I cannot accept the fact of just letting go of everything he did to me and allowed others to do to me. I was hurt for too long, that hurt got me desperate enough to allow me to leave here, 
for my sake, and Kevin's. But I still carry the pain of what he did to me, it remains in my heart, and refuses to let me just let it go. I will let it go today, and then I am done. I am not planning on ever coming back to the goddess forsaken place again. The decisions that he made have impacted us both. The cost of it was too great to bear for me, or for Kevin. Blake honestly thinks that he can just gloss over it, and downplay it like it was just a simple misunderstanding. It wasn't a misunderstanding, it wasn't just an accident. Everything that was done to us, was carefully thought out, it was deliberately set up to inflict the maximum amount of pain for us both. To cause the optimum damage to me, with the threat of losing my son hanging over me. Their attempt to try to force me into admitting to something that I had never done, was never to fix anything. Graham's death won't fix it either. Knowing that my mate, the man I have children with, chose to believe a known liar, over listening to his own mate. I am sorry. I just cannot get past that. This whole thing was designed to tear me apart, and they were successful in it. I tried to tell him hundreds of times. I did, I even tried to get him to listen to the recording I had of Graham admitting to planning this whole thing, and what he was planning for our sons. Blake just threw my phone across the room in a rage. I could have accepted the fact that he may not have listened at first, as he was angry. But for it to have gone on for years, with him not letting up, or stopping to think any part of it through, until it was way too late. We only have our word, we are only as good as it is. I have been honest with Blake for our whole relationship, I kept my word, and he was the one who didn't. I have warned him well over 100 times. That when the time came, he wouldn't be forgiven, if he didn't think it through for himself before it was too late. I was not about to change that at all. I had to stand by what I said. I have to stand firm for not just myself, but for my son, as the damage to us is too great to recover from. He has gone too far for me in the last eight months, so I had to make a plan to get away. I won't not be coming back here, I would not have the pack's respect. Seeing so many familiar faces, some who blatantly gave me side eyes. Some sent glances letting me know that if I wasn't with this group, I would have been sorry to have returned here. Blake and Graham did the most damage for Kevin and me where the pack was concerned. It was open season on us, everywhere we went, every single day. We were off limits to no one here in the pack, and they made sure to take advantage of it. I have never felt more shame in my life about how I have been treated, until today. I am praying that we can just get out of here before I get confronted again. I don't know if he told them what actually happened, or not. It sure didn't seem like they had been informed that I had not cheated on him. I don't know if they were all aware that it was all made up by Graham to split us up. If I had to guess, probably not. He may be waiting to fix it before my return to the pack. He would be wrong to keep thinking that is going to happen. Since I arrived here my anxiety has been through the roof. Waiting to be approached and confronted, shoved out of the way, or just the normal thing of being ignored when I spoke. The last one was actually my favorite because I didn't have to deal with a cruel comment or be physically hurt. It was disrespectful to ignore their Luna, but they heard me, and they did end up doing what I had asked them to do. So it was the least of my worries when they chose to ignore me. I was good with it, it was the least confrontational. I got no response from Graham, so I know he was just going to ignore me now. I told him all that was weighing on my heart. Everything that I wanted to unload, and leave here at Black Moon. I was done sugarcoating it all, and by the time I got done, I had Raven on one side of me, with her hand on my shoulder, and Reagan on the other. They were both giving me silent support, and I needed it. I was speaking from the heart, and I didn't even try to hide my tears. 
they needed to get out. Because when I was through speaking to him about this, I was done talking about it. I started from the moment we arrived here, to the moment I left. He kept his back toward me the whole time. I knew he wouldn't respond to me before I even started to speak to him. He didn't care, he wouldn't have done any of it, if he had cared at all about the damage to me that he was inflicting. I have known for a long time that Graham cares about Graham, and that was it. The thing is, I didn't need a response from him, or from Blake. This was me letting go of a thousand slights, hurtful moments, barbs, and all the physical and emotional abuse that I suffered over the last several years at their hands. I wasn't only speaking to Graham either, I was speaking to both him and Blake. They had a partnership in attempting to destroy me, and although they were pretty successful, they did not complete their mission. Kevin and I are safe in a pack that cares for us and will protect us. My life has changed for the better, and I will be sure to make sure they get that message too. I don't need either of them to speak to me. I would actually prefer that neither of them responded at all. Because nothing that they could possibly say to me would fix any of it. Choices were made here. Bad ones that affected me and Kevin more than they will ever know. I know that they are both listening to me. I also know that unless you experience something like what we were forced to do, you can't fully understand it. It is over for them, in their minds. Now that Blake knows the whole truth of the matter, he feels like he can just say, Oops, I am sorry for that Cheryl and I should immediately forgive him. Throughout our years together, he has taken his anger out on me, numerous times, for one reason or another. Being an alpha is hard, I know that, and I tried to support him through any challenges that came up. I tried to be the very best Luna that he could ever hope for. He always apologized to me after the fact, and I always forgave him. Some of the incidents were bad, but I loved him, and I wanted to forgive him. This time, I still love him, although it is not as much as it used to be. With time it will fully dissipate, and to be honest, that is what I want to happen. The difference is that now, I don't want to forgive him anymore. He took my love for him for granted. That he could do whatever he wanted to, to me, and I would just be happy to forgive him and go back to how we were. Even though he tried to destroy the love I carried for him daily, doing this over and over again, for over six long years. He showed me in a thousand different ways that me, and my feelings, didn't matter at all to him. He can excuse it all he wants, and blame it all on Graham like he has been, but he chose to do it. He made that decision himself, no matter how he wants to deny it or make excuses for it over his being jealous of other men. I see it for what it was now, toxic, utterly possessive, and not in a good way. Not in an I am so proud to introduce you to my mate because I love her so much, but more of a she belongs to me, and she better not make any mistakes, or she will be punished kind of way. I didn't realize it because I was so caught up in being in love with him, that I thought our love was equal. That he loved me as much as I loved him. But how could he have loved me like that? When he was so quick to toss me aside, without even looking into the validity of it. I do not need for you to reply to me anyway, Graham. Because I know you, I know that 70% of what comes out of your mouth would be a lie anyway. So thank you for sparing me the additional lies, I don't have time for a response from you anyway. I already have the displeasure of seeing your villainous face anyway. The only regret I have over what I have done is that I had to kill two innocents. I do feel horrible about that. It was the hardest thing that I have ever had to do, and I will probably never get over it. I still see them when I close my eyes. But make no mistake about it Graham, I had to do it, and you are the very reason why I had to. Don't you remember the timeline you gave me? The one that I heard from your own mouth. 
the one where after you got Blake to cheat on me, you would have my oldest son, Forrest, murder his own brother. His innocent younger brother. You forced my hand, and it was either kill to bring him to safety, or both of us died here, by the plan you put into action. You took enough from me, my mate, my children, and the respect of the pack that I have worked so hard for, over the last fifteen years. You are the most disgusting person that I know, just being around you is making my stomach turn in revulsion. You are absolutely undeserving of any mercy, grace, or happiness ever again. I pray to the goddess that whatever punishment Blake decides to give you, is sent to him by the goddess herself to be the thing that you dread the most. I hope that you never get a moment's peace again because that is what you gave me. I had nowhere that I could go here in this pack, where I was safe to rest in peace, other than locking myself in my office. But you knew that I had to be available to the pack at all times. I couldn't lock my door to them. The same pack who hated me for the perceived betrayal I had done to its alpha. So even that was taken away from me. My own room became a nightmare as my mate, you know what, I am done here, and I am not saying anything else. I have said my piece. Anyone else who wants to speak is more than welcome to do it. Graham will never fully understand what he has done wrong in his life until the goddess herself points it out to him. He will not be living in my head rent-free anymore. He is not worthy of it, and I refuse to dwell on any of what happened here anymore. Kevin and I are now in a better place. I know that we will be protected, and most of all safe from you, by staying at Black Adder I told them and went to stand up. I felt the need to get out of the cell area. I feel like the walls are closing in on me, and I just need to leave. I will go wait upstairs for you all to finish talking to him. I just cannot stand to see him any longer. He is making me want to lose my breakfast I told the group. Blake went to step forward to go with me, and I waved him off. I am fine, you need to stay down here with your guests. Thank you for allowing me to come back and speak to him, as hard as it was, it helped, I told him as I rose from my chair. I did not want him to touch me right now, or really ever again. It would keep me from staying on the path of being able to heal myself. I honestly didn't want anyone to touch me right now. I felt exposed raw and vulnerable right now. I knew that I was near tears and I needed to leave the cell area before they started up again. I could tell that Anton wanted to come with me, but he was down here to be able to bust Graham out with his lies. For closure, we all needed to know what he honestly felt, versus the lies that came out of his mouth. So he needed to stay, but I could see how upset he was at my leaving. I smiled at him to let him know that I was okay and then nodded at him. I wanted him to know that I understood how he was feeling, and I see could see some of the tension leave his body. Alexei was the one to walk over to me and escort me back down the hallway to the stairs to go back up. When I passed the cell that contained the last of Blake's girlfriends I heard her say to me, I am so sorry for the part I played in this Luna. I believed the lies too and I felt you deserved what you were being given. I was wrong and I regret that I played any part in all you went through. I never knew that you went through so much here, I just never realized. She tapered off with her speaking as she knew nothing that she said would take back the fact that she fell for it because she wanted my mate. She excused the fact that what she doing was wrong because she wanted him, so she excused her behavior to the fact that I deserved it. Whatever makes her sleep better at night. She can have him now for all I cared, I was done. I nodded to her, in acknowledgement of what she said, I could tell that she meant it. I could see that she had tears on her face too and the guilt that she felt for all I had gone through. But it wasn't going to help me get past this. No sorry about that will be getting me past this. My son was almost killed here because of the cruel plan made up by this. I will never be getting over that, 
no matter how long I live. Alexei was patient as he helped me to climb up the stairs. I was grateful for him because I was drained right now and completely exhausted. He had already let them know I was coming because when I arrived at the seating area outside Blake's office, one of the lone chairs was free, and Kira was sitting on the arm of the couch, right next to Irina. They all gave me a tight smile, and I know that they probably heard what I just said down there due to their heightened hearing. Great, that is not embarrassing to me at all. We sat in silence for the next five minutes until I heard a familiar voice say, I thought it was just a rumor. How dare you show your face here at Black Moon again? You killed fellow pack members, you deserve to be in the cells. Before I can respond, I felt a sharp slap hit my face. He hit me so hard that the chair slid to the side by a couple of inches. I grasped my cheek, and in the time it took for my hand to cover my face, I was surrounded by the vampires. I could hear my dad's gasp of surprise as he realized his mistake too late. He was not focused on them, he clearly only saw me when he decided that it would be a good time to correct me for my mistakes. Max is by my side as he stood up with them and they protected me from his view. You dare hit her? Are you crazy? Did you not see us all sitting here with her? She is a member of our group. Yet you show her so much disrespect Alexei spoke with so much venom in his voice that I almost felt bad for my father. I don't know why they are so protective over me, but I am very thankful for it at this moment. I say almost because he has always disrespected me, favoring my brother over me in every decision that he made between us. Even after we had to leave Black Adder in banishment, he favored Leander. I bent over backward to gain my father's love and affection, and I never received it. Even after my doing all he requested of me back at Black Adder, to become the Luna, he never appreciated me at all. I can hear my father's gasp of surprise as he gets lifted by his throat and slammed into the wall behind him. His legs were dangling above the ground, useless to help him get out of Alexei's grip. His hands were clawing at Alexei's hand to be released. I was glad that he defended me but I do not want Alexei to get into trouble for it. The vampires parted as I stepped forward, and I was glad for the support that Max was giving me. That blow was a hard one, and I am still reeling from it as I was off balance, and dizzy. You can let him down, Alexei, I do not want to start anything with Black Moon. I do not want this to come back on you, or your coven, in any way. This man was my father, but I am okay with accepting that he isn't anymore. I am done with everyone in this pack, including my parents I told Alexei in a low tone, as this situation was getting even more embarrassing as we were collecting more and more unwanted attention. My children were the only exception to what I just said, but I don't want people to hear me clarify that part of it. I will always love each and every one of my babies no matter if they took their father's side in this or not. They were still young, and they thought that they were supporting the parent that had been wronged. I cannot fault them when the whole pack believed the lies about me as well. My face hurts where he hit me, and it is stinging pretty badly, my lip is split where his hand connected with it, and I taste the metallic taste of it in my mouth. He got me pretty good, especially since I was not expecting it. I guess Dad wanted to get his point across when he confronted me. Alexei reluctantly lowed my father down to the ground. As expected he started screaming for help through the mind link and warriors started pouring into the area. I see Garrett, Mark and Travis coming in as well, and they stopped at seeing me standing in front of the group of vampires. They quickly got up to speed with the mark on my face and my father standing there huffing in frustration. I am going to wait to see what they do first before I say anything. What are you waiting for? Take her and this disgusting vulture down to the cells, right now. I was just threatened, and assaulted by this man, 
and I will not accept it. We are supposed to be safe in our own pack my father yelled at the warriors. They were all lined up behind the beta and gammas, waiting on their orders. Are you okay Luna? Garrett asked me, with more respect than he has ever spoken to me before. I guess he does know the story, and he also knows that Blake and I took the punishment that he and Mark had earned. Do not do anything to this group. I was defended by them after Silas ran up and assaulted me. I am sure the evidence is still clearly showing on my face. They are guests here at Black Moon, invited by Blake himself. They do not deserve any punishment for what happened. Alexei was defending me from Silas but did not harm him. Silas is just embarrassed that he rushed up and attacked someone sitting with a group of vampires. He bit off more than he could chew, and now is scared, and trying to involve all of you in it I told them and I put my Luna tone in my voice. I tried to stand as straight as I could and tried to emit some power with it. I was unable to really put any power out there for them to really feel. I know that I am still weak. That I am still unable to defend myself, but I felt as safe as I did as a small child in my mother's arms right now for some reason. I knew in my heart that the group that was with me, would not be letting any one of them touch me again. She is no longer the Luna here. She has no authority to say or do anything here. I told you that I was attacked, and you need to do as I say. Take her down, and this man right here. I will deal with them later. She has no power here anymore after she killed three pack members. The fact that she is with these disgusting leeches shows me just how far she has gone away from her family. I agree, I do not claim her either. She deserves to be put to death and I am going to make sure that Blake punishes them both for their actions today my father roared out in anger and frustration. Some of the warriors came forward to try to grab me, and the vampires all took up positions in front of me again. I couldn't see anything anymore as Alexei was front and center in front of me, with Dmitri and Ivan on one side of him, and Adric on the other. The women were on either side of the men and made quite an effective wall to show that the warriors would have to get through them before they would get to me. Max pulled a chair over for me to sit down, as he could tell from how much energy he was expending, that I could not stand for too much longer. I can hear more warriors coming our way, and I was so stressed out at what was about to happen. I just wanted to leave here, now, without being in a confrontation and that is not going to be happening anymore. I do not want something bad to happen here that would cause Alexei and Anton's coven to be involved in a war with Black Moon. It was all my fault and my dizziness increased. I could hear some screams of fright from the other side of the vampires before I saw spots in front of my eyes, and then the darkness took me away. Chapter 146 Blake's POV Who does this vampire think he is? First that stupid doctor, and now this blood demon is after my mate. I will not give her up, and I will fight both of them to the death over her. I am standing here fuming as Cheryl tells Graham the full story of what he put her through. Every heartache, and abuse that she suffered in silence. She went through so much here, things that I never even knew about. But I would be straightening it all out soon. I felt like the biggest that has ever lived listening to it come pouring out of her. Her raw pain as she spoke, her tears sliding down her face, but she never sobbed. She spoke through the whole thing. She is so strong, and we hurt her so much. She was devastated by what we had done to her. I honestly don't see her wanting to come back here after the blows that she was dealt. I know that the whole group was hearing this and they are judging me for my part in it. How is she supposed to forgive me, when I hurt her so much? I refuse to accept the fact that she won't come back to me, to our family, to our pack. She has to, and I will make sure she knows that I will do whatever she asks of me, to get her to love me and come back and take her place beside me again. 
Graham just lay there with his back to us and ignored the whole conversation. But I knew what she was doing. She was putting it down, and leaving the whole thing here. When she was done and went to go upstairs, I wanted to go with her and see if she would be willing to go up to our apartment to talk and see the children. She loves our pups as much as I do, and I was hoping to soften her heart by her seeing them. I have to fix this as soon as I can. Men are coming out of the freaking woodwork wanting her, and they can't have her. She broke my heart when she almost mentioned the times that I took her choice away and forced her to sleep with me. I didn't mean to push her like that, but I need to feel like we were a true couple again. I thought it would work, she has always reacted well when we are together. That had happened before the cheating, back when she would still sleep with me. It would anger me that she would not comply with what I wanted from her. I just wanted her to confess her actions, and I wanted our relationship to be how it was before. It wasn't and with each passing day, it got worse. I know she stopped herself to keep the rest of the group from judging me for my actions against her. It was not my finest moment, and it only happened a handful of times, but I still carried the guilt over it. It wasn't s asterisk x, it was brute force. It was me showing her who was the boss, even if she refused to acknowledge that I was the boss. That she could deny me nothing, and I showed her exactly what her place was here. But it didn't work out as it should have. She just pulled even further away from me. That was how I knew just how upset she was over Kara and the other girls. After I cheated on her, she refused to sleep with me again. She let me know quickly that it would be a fight to the death over it. We fought several times over that very thing, with the bulk of them ending up with both of us bleeding from the fight. I knew that she was serious about it, as she fought hard against me. I didn't want her to stop sleeping with me, she was the one who meant the most to me in my world. It was only her for me, and my fury at what Graham took away from me, reignites inside me. I wanted to strangle him with my own hands over this. I had decided to leave it alone as I figured that one day she would forgive me, and we would be together again. She always forgives me, because she loves me, I just had to be patient and wait for her to calm down. That day never came, and then she left. When I just tried to approach her she flinched away from me, she didn't want me to touch her. I can see that this is not going in the way that I thought it was going to go. I honestly thought that after I sincerely apologized to her, she would forgive me, and I was so wrong about that. I could tell that Anton had asked his brother to take her upstairs. I was glad he was doing that, but I didn't want her to be up there with the doctor either. That jerk refused to listen when I told him to leave her alone. The lack of respect that was being given to me, was really pissing me off. I was half listening to what was being said now, my only focus was on what could be happening upstairs with the doctor tending to Cheryl. I am sure that he takes every opportunity to take care of her that he can. I am sick of him, and I will be glad when she decides to let go of the anger that she is holding over this. I need her to realize that everything I did, was only because I loved her so much. The quicker she comes to grips with the fact that I will die without her, I am sure she will snap out of her petty little annoyance with me. I just need to keep showing her how much I truly love and care for her. After a while, she will come around and forgive me. Even when I was not a good mate to her, she forgave me, this should not be any different than those times. I was glad that one of the she-wolves felt bad enough about what she had done to Cheryl, to apologize to her for it. I will not punish her as badly as I will the rest of them. They have shown no remorse at all for their actions against my Luna. Brandon and Justin had nothing at all to say to Graham. They had no interest in speaking to him at all. They knew he was done for now, inside my cells. They were content with whatever I ended up doing to him as punishment. Reagan and Raven were done now. 
They seemed fine with telling him what they really thought of him. I am glad that it is done now, as I would like to get out of here and go see my mate. I see that Raven and Regan are both looking at Anton and wanting to get his thoughts right about what Graham was truly feeling, instead of what he had been saying. I can see that Anton was looking back towards the stairs leading upstairs as if he wanted to go up now too, but he did as they asked him to. Cole, you were right Graham has lied about almost everything. I am sorry for speaking fast, but I need to run this down quickly, as I am needed upstairs. Graham knows he was wrong for taking Cassandra from the mating ball. He didn't realize that her true mate was you when he was trying to talk her into leaving with him. He assumed that he could provide her with what she wanted, more so than her mate. Once he learned that you were her mate when they ran into you, he knew he would look weak if he backpedaled. He knew that every decision that he made after that, is exactly what got him here. He was actually sorry that he didn't return Raven. The longer that it went on and the older she got, he felt it would just be worse for him to return her. He also knows that he was punished by the goddess with no more children because he disregarded the mate bond by lying to her to get her to come with him. He is fully aware that taking Cassandra like that was the start of all his problems. He knew he pissed the goddess off, but didn't care because he got Cassandra, and that was who he wanted at his side. He will never admit that he knows that he was wrong for it, and will never apologize for his actions. But he is very jealous that Cole was blessed by the goddess with more children. Graham knew that he was being punished for not being able to have more children himself, as there was nothing wrong with him, or Cassandra to have prevented it. That is the bulk of what you needed to know, Cole, Anton told the group. I am amazed at his gift. It must be a lot of pressure to be around people, especially those that do not like you, with this kind of gift, but at least you will always know when you are being lied to. Raven, he actually feels somewhat bad that he allowed his pack to hurt you. He treated you badly, and they saw it. So they did it too, thinking that is what he wanted them to do, and it was. It did hurt Cassandra that he never punished them for it. She did speak to him numerous times to stop it, but he never did. He was trying to push you into running away from the pack, but not to Blood Walker. He wanted her to either stay locked up forever at Silver Blade, or run away from the pack, but not to Blood Walker. He never wanted Cole to find out about her. Not returning you to your father after you were born, is actually his biggest regret but it is fifty-fiftieths with it being for what all happened to you, and fear of Cole. He also feels bad about all the plans they made to make you look bad, and cause you harm. Mostly because of how badly it went, and just made them look bad. Cassandra was the most disappointed in him for all the pain he put you through. She blamed him for it, and she was angry at him for everything that he allowed to happen to you. After Reagan tried to kill you, Cassandra finally put her foot down and told him if it happened again, that she would take you and leave. She also told him that she would tell Cole about what he had done to you. That was why he stopped Reagan from attacking you again and Tun told her, and this guy is moving through everything, and quickly. I hate to be impressed, but I am. He would be a great asset for any pack and he can see intentions from a mile away. Reagan, he is most upset by knowing that he trained you to grow up and be like him. At first, he liked it, but in the past 15 years since you got hurt, he realized the mistakes he made. He created you to be a narcissist just like he is. He spoiled you and gave you big ticket items when you would do what he wanted. Like tormenting Raven to run under the radar after Cassandra gave him the ultimatum. He did feel guilty about what happened to you at Blood Tracker, but he did not start his vendetta because of it. He felt guilty that he hadn't trained you to be able to protect yourself. If he wanted to punish the wrongdoers over your attack, he would have started with Garrett and Mark. 
He knew he couldn't take over the pack if he didn't start with Blake, and that is the real reason why he didn't start with them Anton told the group. Blake, Cole, and Justin had moved in closer as this was more interesting to see him tell exactly what was inside Graham's head than listening to him lie with every word he spoke. Blake this involves you and Regan, as you need to know the reason that he started with Cheryl and Blake. It was because he was angry at Blake for taking his $250,000 and not doing as he asked. Graham wanted you to let Regan stay here without punishment for what she did. He was ashamed that Blake made you a breeder. He was more ashamed that you were no longer perfect after you were attacked. Graham has always placed great value on appearances, and that was why his true mate, a warrior who was not up to par with his standards had to be rejected. Seeing you scarred up made him more ashamed about what you looked like now. More so than being angry at your having been hurt, and almost killed. Since Blake disrespected him, he came up with this plan against them. He is only upset about two things. The first was that he couldn't get Blake to cheat on Cheryl sooner, it threw his timeline off. Kevin got stronger and stronger and Forrest couldn't beat him in a fight anymore, even with his friends helping him. The weight caused the problem that Forrest would not have been able to take Kevin down. The second reason was that Blake managed to get control of his finances, and he has no more money. That has hurt him to his core Anton told Reagan, who nodded as if that was what she thought. Finally, what his thoughts are about Cassandra. He knows that his drugging her was wrong, but he wanted to be with her again, and he felt that she was taking too long to forgive him. He was tired of waiting for her to give him another chance. He used the same thing on her, as he gave the girls to use on Blake to get her to bend to his will. He also is aware that he is indeed the reason that she was killed. He knew something was up the night before when Cheryl came to his table. It was the look she gave him. Letting him know that he had not completely won, but he didn't know what it meant until after it was over and done. Also, and this is important, on their last night together Cassandra told Graham that she knew what he had done to Blake and Cheryl, and their son. She told him that she had never been more disappointed in him, in her life. She also told him that whatever happens in the future, was directly on him. So she herself told him that it was his fault the night before it happened. She did know that she would die and was okay with what the goddess had told her was going to happen as a result of it. She probably felt like she had to atone for all she had done and allowed to happen when she knew it was wrong. Most of that guilt was over Raven, and how she was treated. Lastly, he does actually want to kill Cheryl. I will have to say that you will have to get past me to do it you disgusting reprobate Anton finished up. We were all so busy looking at him as he relayed everything to us, that none of us noticed that Graham had gotten up from his cot. He was standing at the bars of his cell staring at Anton as if he has seen a ghost. Anton turned to him and gave him the same smirk that Graham had given to him earlier. Anton then turned and ran to the stairs hurrying up them as fast as he could. I didn't even have time to try to figure out why he was running when I got a mind link from Garrett. We have a problem, Blake. We need you to come to your office Garrett told me and I ran down the hall and up the stairs out of the cell area. I cannot believe my eyes as I hit the landing. It is complete chaos as there are ten warriors currently floating in the air, and Silas is screaming his head off as Anton slams him into the wall with his hand on his neck. What is going on here? I yelled out as I have no idea what just happened up here. I heard the rest of the group coming up the stairs behind me. Brandon, Justin and Cole are quick to take protective measures standing in front of the vampires, and Clive steps up to protect Anton as he steps between him and my ranked wolves. Raven and Regan both quickly walked around the line of vampires looking for Cheryl. I heard them both gasp and then a loud growl of anger sounds from Raven. Who hit Cheryl? She roars out as she comes back around the line of vampires. 
the atmosphere suddenly changed in the hallway. This is her own pack, who would dare hurt her here? My roar of anger and frustration fills the area and I look around at my men, to hear what happened. He did, Alexei said and pointed at Silas who suddenly is much less vocal and had stopped screaming. I guess he knows from my reaction, that maybe he made a mistake here. I am glad to see it when Anton digs his nails into Silas's neck. I can tell that Anton is trying to calm himself down and not do some serious damage to Silas. I know from the look on his face, that he wants to snap his neck. Why Silas? I asked him. Anton suddenly let him go and since Silas didn't expect it, he fell down to his knees when he hit the floor. He glared up at Anton before standing up and his fury over the incident is filling him with self-righteous indignation. Anton stepped away from him and started to walk around the group to go check on Cheryl. I had to stay right here, if I see her hurt, I might kill Silas. I am trying to hold on to my own anger in this situation, as I already know how he feels about Cheryl. I left him alone as Silas is her father, and I knew when she had enough she would deal with him herself. She deserved it, Blake. She killed three pack members, and he tried to defend her after I slapped her. I had instructed the warriors to take them both down to the cells, but then these damn vampires stopped us. I was within my rights as she is guilty of murder, and needs to be punished. I am her father, and I felt what I did was appropriate. The slap should be the least of it. She left her mother on the side of the road and she was in shock for days after the incident. There has to be some punishment for her actions. When I got the mind link that she was actually here, I started to look for her until I found her. She should never have come back to Black Moon. No one wants her here, Silas said and his chest is heaving in his anger. Alexei, what happened here, I asked him. We were sitting outside your office talking to each other. Cheryl needed to rest and was sitting in a chair. She had her back to him when he walked up yelling at her. He slapped her hard, Blake. So hard her chair slid. I did grab him, but I had a reason for it. He should be glad that I didn't kill him for what he did. She still has a handprint on her face, Blake. She is still weak and recovering. She cannot heal herself. We did stop them from trying to take us to the cells as Cheryl passed out for about a minute. Most likely, from the stress of this situation. We made sure we didn't hurt anyone, but I would like to Alexei said, and gave a pointed look at Silas. Silas was smart enough to step a few steps further back from me. You are a piece of st. Silas, you always have been from what I have heard from your own son. How dare you put your hands on her? You don't even have all the information to be able to have made that kind of judgment call on your own. You say she isn't Luna anymore, but Blake still wants her to come back, and take her spot again. You are the one who holds no rank here, and you don't have any authority to have them held in the cells either. The council is not going to punish her for what she was forced into doing to get herself and her son to safety. You would be bringing the council itself down on you for incarcerating her over it when they have already ruled in her favor on it. She had a reason, and it has been documented and recorded by the council as to why it happened. But if you want, I bet I can get the council here, very quickly in fact. I believe that they would be fine with talking to both you and Billy, about the crimes you committed at Black Adder. Plus, you can talk to Brandon as to what he would like from you personally, as recompense to Black Adder. You were the person behind all of it, and you should have to pay some type of penalty for it. I think we should get them here, so we can get this all straightened out, Silas Raven told him, and she is pissed. I have never seen her this angry, but I don't know her very well. I knew I had paid the funds to them myself, but I agree with her. 
he should make some form of payment to them, and hitting people in their wallets usually hurts them the most. You have no power here, so you can shut up too Silas snapped back at her. Then all broke loose. Chapter 147 Raven's POV That was a complete IT, how could he have just walked up and hurt Cheryl like that? What could he have been thinking? I saw Blake was just as stunned by Silas saying that as I was, but I knew what was about to happen. Both Brandon and Justin lunged for Silas and would have grabbed him but he ran behind the rest of the group to hide. Just like the coward, he is. I have got him, boys, Nadia said and the next thing you knew he rose above the men he was hiding behind, and then floated back over towards us. He was screaming out calling out for help, as he sailed through the air over to the vampires from the safety of where he had just been standing. You might want to give him straight to Blake. I believe that they are going to hurt him if they get their hands on him I told Nadia as I went to take each of my mate's hands in mine. They have to calm down. This is not our pack. We have no pull here. This is a cue for us to leave here as soon as we can. We are not safe, and I do not trust a number of the men here. Including that Travis guy who we kicked out of our pack. He is standing there leering at Reagan and me like he wanted nothing more than to get his hands on the both of us. I shuddered in disgust, as my men calmed down. Yes, we needed to leave, and right now. If they saw that jerk looking at me like that, they would kick his a asterisk s for the thoughts that he was not even trying to hide from everyone present. Thank you for letting us speak to Graham, Blake. I believe that you will give him just what he deserves for what he has done. But I believe that it is time for us to leave here. Please reach out to us if you need something from us. We will try to accommodate you in whatever we can. That is if you are willing to allow us to leave peacefully. I think you know who is really at fault here, but I hope you will take into account what he did to your mate I told him. I know she probably doesn't want to cause problems and would love to leave just as much as we would, but she needs to show him what Silas did to her. Blake has his hand on Silas's wrist, to prevent him from walking away from him. Cheryl, would you please come here? I would like to see what your father has done Blake called out to her. He is no longer my father. We are nothing to each other anymore. I pray I never see him again for the rest of my life Cheryl said as she came from behind the line of vampires with the help of Max on one arm, and Anton on her other arm. Cheryl's head was down. She looked down at the ground as she walked, and I couldn't see her injury anymore. Cheryl just doesn't like a lot of attention. She had been broken down, and her confidence has taken a hard hit from all she had experienced here. I guess being told repeatedly that you are worthless and had no value for years, it eventually will eventually make you believe that it might be true. I can see both men glaring at each other over her head, and the room is getting very tense over it. The vampires will be backing Anton in this, and it will not go well for Max if they push the issue. I pray that this doesn't go south before we can get out of here. We don't need them to fight over her, and I stepped forward with Reagan to take over assisting Cheryl. Blake was so pissed at seeing them helping her, rather than at the injury that she has sustained. Neither wanted to let go of the arm that they were holding, but they both realized that if they had to let go, the other one did too. That was something that was acceptable to both of them and Reagan and I helped her walk to Blake. When Cheryl raised her head to look at him, he gasped in shock. Her wolf was healing her, albeit slowly. The bruise was now a deep purple color and it had made a clear outline of a handprint on her face. The blood at the corner of her mouth was not a great look for her delicate feature. Her being frail already, was just the cherry on top of the whole thing. Blake was furious and he let go of Silas' wrist and turned to him like he was going to confront him. Silas seemed a lot more worried all of a sudden but he never saw Blake's hand coming. 
Blake slapped him so hard that Silas was knocked down to the floor. The surprise evident all over his face, he didn't expect it, and Blake said to Garrett, take him downstairs, he gets three days in the cells. I see the concern he has for Cheryl all over his face. He doesn't know what to say, or to do here in this. I can tell that he cannot believe that someone, especially her father would do that to her. Silas is hurling threats at Cheryl as he gets taken down to the cells to start his sentence. I know we need to go now. Cheryl is getting hard to hold up, and I am concerned that she might pass out again. This day has obviously taken a toll on her. I never knew how bad she truly had it here. She didn't like to speak about it, and she had both Reagan and me in tears for all she had suffered. As mothers ourselves we know that the thing that hurt her the most was trying to get her son safely out of there. That must have weighed on her all day long, every single day. Not knowing when Graham was going to put his evil plan in motion. All that anxiety, fear and stress had to have been draining her every day. I know that the goddess herself probably put it on Kevin's heart to train. His strength was the reason that Graham's plan had failed. Kevin got to be stronger than his older brother, all because he was trying to earn just a little love or approval from Blake. I smiled at the thought of the goddess herself stepping in and stopping something that he spent years perfecting. I linked Justin and Brandon and told them we needed to get going, now. They already knew it, and without saying anything Reagan and I led the way, with Clive, my dad, Justin, Brandon and Max providing a circle of protection around the vampires. It let everyone we passed know they if they wanted to get at the vampires, they were going to have to go through us. But they were all intimidated by the vampires already in the first place. Especially after Nadia lifted Silas off the floor like she just did. It let them know that they were probably dealing with not just vampires, but specials. It made them doubly dangerous, and they all stepped back suddenly to give us the room to walk past. I bet that was Blake telling them to do it, as he stayed at the back of the group. We took a few more steps before Cheryl's legs gave out. Reagan and I were having to hold her up. Anton was there immediately, it was like he anticipated it and he swept her up into his arms bridal style. She was too weak to want to argue with him, but I could see the concern for him on her face. She knew the second Blake saw it, he would be in danger, so we all picked up the pace. We didn't have to go slow to allow Cheryl to walk on her own, so we got to the SUVs quickly. Blake should have clued in but I think he was still upset over the fact that Cheryl had been assaulted by her own father. Anton placed her gently into the SUV and buckled her in. He then slid past her to sit on the last row, right behind her. I noticed that he was leaning forward, his hand lightly touching her arm to give it a squeeze. I couldn't tell if he was trying to give her support, or if he needed to comfort himself that she was okay and we were all getting out of there. Blake came up to her door to tell her goodbye, and as soon as he caught sight of Anton touching her, he couldn't stop himself, Cheryl is my mate, as much as we both appreciate you taking up for her, you don't need to do it anymore. I am willing and able to do it. I can fully protect my mate. Please do as you said, when you told me that she still loved me, and for me to give her time. I feel like you wanted to help us at first, and now you just want her for yourself. Please think of Cheryl, how could that possibly work between you two? You are from two different worlds, you cannot be a match, to even try to make this work. Just leave her alone, and allow me to beg her forgiveness. I will do anything to get her back, and I think you should keep your word and not prevent me from trying to get my mates to come back to me Blake said in a huff. I know what I said Blake, it was only yesterday. But that was before I really looked into her memories. I was just going by the fact that she did still have some love for you still left in her heart. She did, and she still does, 
but something she said while she was talking to Graham hit me. So I looked deeper into her memories. I will not be stopping, or backing away from her again. She would be way better off with me, or even Max, than to be with you. I see what you did to her. I saw it like I was in the room with you when it happened. I felt her emotions at what you did to her, and her fear of you as you did what you wanted, with no regard for her at all when you did it. You took your own mate against her will, and you didn't do it just once. When I hear what she said, and then stopped herself from going any further, I suspected, so I checked. She had them locked away, so she didn't have to face them anymore. You gave her too much trauma. I won't be stepping back, Blake. I hope that you realized that she wasn't just talking to Graham in there, she was talking to you too. There were hints all over the place from Cheryl that it was the both of you that she was actually speaking to. You both worked together to tear her apart. I see the damage left behind. She is strong, but even strong women can be torn apart, by the words and deeds of others. Especially when it comes to them from the very ones they love. You hurt her more than Graham did. You listened to him, and chose him, over her. You made sure to hurt her, all in the name of your justice. I bet you felt sickened by all you put her through when you found out that you were wrong. Yet you buried your head in the sand to not see what your vicious pack had done to her. She never complained, and the worst part to me, was she still tried to be the best mate, and Luna, for you that she could be. Even with the oppression that you were bringing to her. She kept up everything she promised you in her Luna ceremony. You failed her, over and over, and then dare to stand there like you are the victim yourself. Go try to peddle it somewhere else, because no one here is buying it Anton told Blake. I saw the fire leap up in Blake's eyes and I linked Brandon, we need to go now because I am starting to get the impression that we are about to have to fight our way out of here Brandon started the SUV up, and the vampires had already started to back out. I am sure that Alexei had told them that Anton just drew the line in the sand, and they knew that we were about to be involved in a fight too. I was glad to see that Reagan and Clive were already in their SUV and were waiting on us to follow them up the drive. I turned around to see that Blake was heading for a truck to follow us, and I already suspected that he was telling the gate guards to not allow us to leave. Justin was on the phone with the council telling them what situation we were in, as we might be in a battle for our lives at any minute. We very well may have to fight our way out of here, and although we didn't want to have to do it, we would for us to be able to get to safety. I called my dad to tell him what was happening, and Brandon mind-linked the warriors that had come here with us. They had stayed in their vehicle in front of the pack house, while we went in to speak with Graham. All five of our SUVs were heading to the gate as quickly as we could, but it was indeed locked when we got there. Several warriors were standing in front of it, blocking our way. Let my people go around us to the front of the group, Alexei said in a calm tone. We stay put as they pulled around and a large chunk of ice formed into a huge spear right in front of their SUV. The warriors were lifted out of the way as the spear was thrown at the latch on the gate. It broke the latch in two and the gate opened up for us to leave. The vampire's SUV took the lead to leave, and they rammed the gate with the protective grill on the front of their SUV to slam the gate open for us all. Nadia set the five warriors down behind their gatehouse, as we all sped out of the pack. Reagan and Clive went back to Blood Tracker, and the rest of us all headed home in the opposite direction. Blake did drive up behind us but was not able to pass us to try to get us to stop. We watched as a fireball came out of nowhere and slammed into the hood of his truck. He swerved and came to a sudden stop. He got the warning, and he turned to drive across the median to go back to his pack and make other plans. He knew that alone he was a sitting duck out here. I knew he would be furious at Cheryl for escaping from Black Moon. 
I felt a little bad for him as I know he loves her, but he has to live with the choices he made. This wasn't a sudden or slight mistake. This was years of punishment that was made up to hurt his mate, and he was all in on doing that. He was okay with the hurt he caused her, and he should never have been okay with that. He was told to leave her alone, that stress was bad for her healing process, and yet at every turn, he was pushing her emotions to the breaking point. We all know he wants her back, but he is applying too much force right now. She made it abundantly clear to everyone present when she spoke to Graham, that she was not going to be coming back there, for any reason. I looked back at Alexei in amazement at what we had just witnessed at the gate. How was any of that possible? I asked Alexei. Well, you already knew that Anton and Nadia both have a gift. What you didn't know was that all nine of us, and several others in my coven, have gifts as well. Kira, Dimitri and I are very quick to heal both ourselves and others. Kira is actually more powerful with it as it takes less out of her when she heals others. It tends to weaken Dimitri and me much more when we do it. To me, it is more than a gift really, as it has saved our lives on several occasions. Nadia's gift is called telekinesis, she can move objects. Anton had telepathy, in addition to reading minds, he can also use it to speak into the minds of others as well. I also can control animals, dogs, mountain lions, wolves Alexei trails off with the last one, and gives us all a smile, like he thinks it is funny. I see Brandon looking at him in the rearview mirror at his sarcasm, but I think it is a great gift. We were safer than I thought back at Black Moon. Just the thought of what they can do, makes me realize what a powerful ally we had in him. That would be a very useful skill for him to have I thought. Yes, very useful in case of a war or attack, Anton said from behind me, and I couldn't stop my burst of laughter. Yes, both gifts are very useful skills to have in an ally, I told them both and turned to give them a big smile. They both smiled and nodded at me before they turned serious again. Irina has cryokinesis, who allows her to control the element of ice or cold. It is especially helpful in the winter as her powers at that time are unlimited. Polina has pyrokinesis, which allows her to control fire with her mind, which is what just hit Blake's vehicle. Yvonne has clairvoyance, which is the ability to see the past, present, or future. And you didn't see it, but Adric is a human lie detector. He knows when someone is lying. He cannot read minds like Anton does though, but still a very helpful skill to have in both the coven and when we go to help out on missions like this. It cuts through the bull much quicker than if we have to learn how someone really is because that takes much more time. Usually, time is of the essence especially if their intent is to harm us Alexei told us. You have so many valuable members in your coven, Alexei. I appreciate your team getting us out of there safely. It was about to become a real fight for us at Black Moon, one that would have probably resulted in a war I told him. I am sure that he did what was needed as he knows Anton has feelings for her. It still may result in a war between us. I could tell how mad Blake was with how he tried to chase us down like that. I think that it finally sank into him Cheryl was not going to voluntarily come back to Black Moon Pack. I do not think that he liked the reality check that he just got. I think that Anton repeating what Cheryl said, plus the fact that she wasn't just speaking to Graham when she got everything off her chest, was what got the message through to him today. He just refused to accept the fact that she is over him, and just wants to move on with her life. I know that he will be showing up sooner or later at our gates. I agree, we have many valuable members in our coven. I am very glad that we are so close to Black Adder. I believe that it will be helpful for us as we move forward in the coming months, 
Alexei said and glanced over to grin at his brother who was now sitting stiffly in his seat and seemed like he was uncomfortable with the turn in the conversation. Cheryl slumped over on me to sleep while we head to Alexei and Anton's coven. I had wished that she would have been able to speak to him on the way back, but I already have plans to help them get together again. It might have been for the best. Max and Anton both relaxed after she nodded off. Maybe trying to push them together in front of Max, was not the best thing to do. We can wait a little while longer and get them together again. Cheryl deserves to be happy. This romance needs to be pushed along, as they are both hesitant about moving forward. I think that they are perfect for each other. I would support Max if he had been her choice. She is not interested in him, the way he is in her. He needs to bow out gracefully in this because I can see him getting upset and taking it out on her. I don't want that to happen, I hope he can let her go before it comes to blows between him and Anton. Because I can tell that Anton is very interested in Cheryl, and I do not think that Maz will be able to stop them once they are both willing to admit the attraction between them. Chapter 148 Cheryl's POV It has been three weeks since the episode at Black Moon. Blake has called me numerous times a day, on my old phone, but I am not planning on answering him. I ended up back in the hospital, and after two weeks I do feel a lot better. I can eat and hold foods down pretty well, but I am not eating properly just yet. Max had been a little pushy about asking me out but I have told him time and again that I am not ready yet. That was the truth, but there was another part to that. Even if I was ready, I didn't want to date him. He was nice, he was handsome, and he is a charmer, but I just don't have an interest in him. He has dark brown hair and grey eyes, and although different from Blake's look it was similar enough to think it was Blake at first glance. Blake has done a real number on me, and I feel terrible about the fact that I can't give Max the proper chance at being able to date me. I can't help how I feel. Max's chiseled features being such a reminder of Blake, are not working in his favor. I feel the most guilty of all because I cannot shake it, when he first comes into my room to check on me, my first thought is fear that it is Blake. I could not hide that fact from him as each time he enters the room to check on me, my heart monitor shows just how affected I am by his appearance. At first, he thought that I was excited to see him. But for the last week, he has noticed that I am self-comforting, trying to calm myself back down. It hurts him, and I didn't want to hurt him. He has been nothing but kind and helpful to me since I arrived here. I found him attractive and was flattered when he first showed an interest in me when I went to the gate to see Blake. I was surprised at how he defended me, as Blake was a pretty fierce fighter. I didn't want Max to get hurt by pursuing me, but that has changed. When I met Anton, it was like everyone else faded into the background for me. I never had any feelings for Max other than appreciation for all the help he was giving me to help me get well. I kept trying to get Max to take out one of the nurses in his fan club, but he dug in and refused to do it. He assured me that he was only interested in me, but I can't be what he needs me to be. So I started praying about it, for the goddess to help me out here. I also prayed for guidance because I was missing Anton so much. Even though it has only been three weeks since I got to see him, I miss him terribly. We still keep in touch with each other. I have been texting him daily since Raven gave me his number. I would like to see where this is going to go, but I am also terrified. It is rare for two different species to feel a pull toward each other like we do. He feels it too, and although he is better with it than I am, I am scared to mention it to Kevin. I don't know how Kevin is going to feel about it. Our lives have become completely overturned lately. I don't want to add to it when we have finally gotten a little normalcy in our lives. For him, it is for the better. 
He has wonderful friends that already love and support him. He has always been a very grounded child, calm, and teachable, he never causes problems. That is what hurt me so much about this. He is the exact opposite of Forrest, but couldn't get any of the affection that Blake showered on Forrest. He hurt us both so much, there is no point in hearing from Blake again. I just wanted him to stay at Black Moon, and just try to get past this. He needs to accept that what he put us through was too much to bear, and just accept my rejection. I see you are looking well today I heard Max as he entered the room with his usual smile firmly in place. I am, thanks to you, I told him and smiled back at him. I consider him to be one of my best friends here at Black Adder. I am not going to let his crush take a valuable friendship away from me. I did very little, your wolf was the one who got you back up to speed. I cannot wait to meet her. I honestly thought that this was going to take several months, but it looks like you can go into your own home this afternoon. I linked Raven to tell her, and she is getting you an apartment ready on the Gamma floor. Leander wanted to look out for you while you healed so for your safety, you will be staying there. Great, I have been feeling pretty good this last week, so I am excited about this, I told him. I can feel how excited Akela feels too. She wants to get let out. She has not been free for a while, and she wants to go for a long run. She is very impatient at the thought of it. It has been too long for her. She has not been out in almost eight months. She was so weakened by what Blake was doing to us with his girlfriends, that I couldn't face. Akela was using up too much of her power to take the pain from me and after a while. I just couldn't face any more. That was one of the reasons I couldn't just fight to get us out of Black Moon, I had to use other measures. I will miss getting to see you daily but I am hoping that you will at least consider going on a date, or at least dinner in the dining room with Mim. We both have to eat you know, and I am looking forward to getting to know you better. Plus it will give me a chance to meet your son. He is very impressive out on the training field. It is hard to believe that he is not 15 yet Max told me, and I expected it. He has been asking me at least three times a week, to go out with him. I just got out of a draining relationship, I didn't need to leap into another relationship with anyone. I needed to take my time. My mental peace was worth much more to me right now than having a dating life, or a boyfriend. My blood pressure went up as soon as he said the words. I can usually control my mouth, and the expression on my face most of the time, but that is not something that can be hidden especially when I am still hooked up to the machine. He glanced over and gave me a tight smile. Sorry, habit, I guess. I am serious about wanting to get to know you though. I just wanted you to know that I am interested in you Cheryl. It has been a long time since I even thought of wanting to date again. There is just something about you that reminds me of my mate. I guess I missed her so much that I just automatically placed that affection I had for her, onto you. She also was a strong woman, with blonde hair and blue eyes. I guess I will always miss her, and I know that he did not accept your rejection. But I am here for you, as a friend at first, until you want us to be more. I will tell you right now, that I would like to be more than friends. I believe in being honest and upfront, and I know that you do too. It is one of the qualities that I like most about you Max told me, and I can see the pain in his eyes when he speaks about his mate. He still misses her, and I wish that I could let him into my heart. I just can't. He is my friend, and as much as he hates that, it is all that we will ever be to each other. Max. I appreciate you as my friend and doctor. You might not know all that I went through, but you know it was a lot. You saw my condition when I got here. I need time to process it, so I get over it all. 
I know you like me as a potential mate, but I am not there on my end. I am only focused on healing, getting stronger, and being there for my son to help him process everything too. I am not considering anyone as a boyfriend right now I told him, and I saw his frown grow as I spoke to him. Are you sure about that? I see you texting the vampire quite frequently. I know he wants to date you too, but that would be difficult. Much more difficult than dating me, as we are not just pack members together, but friends, and wolves. He will never understand you like I can. He can't even go out in the daytime for the goddess's sake. I mean, it would be difficult for people to accept you together. I know we have a treaty with them, but it still makes people nervous when they are around. I can't blame them for that, as I am nervous too. I just don't want one of them to break your heart. Most of them are playboys, that get around. You have already been hurt, and I do not want to see you hurt again Max told me, and then came to the side of my bed. He put his clipboard in the chair behind him and leaned down and looked earnestly into my eyes as he grabbed my hand and told me, Look, I know that you do not love me yet, but I am a patient man. Love takes time, and I am willing to wait for you to be ready, just don't shoot me down yet. You haven't even given me an opportunity to show you how much you mean to me. I know I remind you of your mate and I am sorry that I cannot change that about myself. Making you happy, and healthy is my number one priority. Please, Cheryl, just allow me to have a chance to show you how much you mean to me, and Kevin too. I do not have any children, but I would be glad to be his father figure. To raise him like my own, but don't answer right now. Just think about it, I would treat you like a queen. Please just give me a chance to do that Max had his emotions showing in his eyes, and I knew that he was telling me the truth, but I don't feel the same for him. Kevin already has a father, doctor, so you are not needed at all. Plus, didn't I tell you more than once to stay away from my mate? It seems like we need to take this outside for you to get the message I heard a familiar voice at the door and my eyes flew over to it with surprise all over my face. Blake was standing there with Raven, Justin, and Brandon with him. I wanted to pull my hands free, but Max stubbornly refused to let them go. It was like he wanted Blake to tear him apart. I finally pulled my hands free from his when my heart monitor started beeping due to it going up so high. I am frustrated and angry that I didn't get a heads up on this. I would have shot Max down a lot quicker so he wouldn't have been here pouring his heart out to me, in what I can only assume was a romantic looking moment between us. I need to clear this up for both of them, right now, before they come to blow over me. I don't want anyone hurt fighting over me, especially when neither of them has a chance of taking my heart. Blake had it and then destroyed it. Max is a good man but I don't feel the same romantic feelings for him, as he does for me. I now suspect that I look a lot more like Max's dead mate than I first thought. It would explain the instant connection that he felt towards me. Maybe my being helpless and injured when I got here helped his feelings grow so quickly for me, but I need to shut this down for them both right now. What are you doing here Blake? Are you here to cause trouble? Because if you are, you can leave right now. I just don't need the stress I told him and saw a smile hit Max's face when I said it. I am here to bring you this, and I was going to talk to you, but I am not here to cause you to stress, Blake said as he pulled a beautiful bouquet already arranged in a vase from behind his back. Okay, thank you for the flowers, Blake. I am better now. You don't have to hang around here looking at me, I am supposed to be discharged today I snapped at him. This is a waste of time, and I was letting my frustration with the situation get the best of me. But you do have time for the mushy st that the doc is spewing. Blake growled out. No, actually I had just told him that I needed time. 
that I still needed to recover not just physically from what you did, but mentally, which will take much, much longer. I need time by myself, I need to get back to training, and I need to allow Akela to stretch her legs. I need to help Kevin deal with his baggage too. Those are important and need to be done. I will assure you both, that I am in no need of an abusive ex-mate, or a new boyfriend. I am not trying to hurt either one of you, but I am not willing, or able, to open my heart only for it to be destroyed again. I can't allow it. I need time, and I need to work through and process what I actually need. For the next six months, I need no man in my life, except Kevin. That is it. So you can stop this stressful flex that you both have going on. I am not some award to be won. I have been crushed, and need to rebuild myself into someone who is reborn to be stronger and wiser than I used to be. To achieve that, I am asking you both to please stop. Stop the pressure you are applying, stop the flexing, because you are not doing what you think you are. You think you are being sweet, romantic even, but all I feel from both of you is stress. You are pressing me down, and I feel like I cannot even breathe from the sheer weight of it I told them and tried to stay calm while I said it. I wanted to cry from all the burden that they are putting on me. Now that I am feeling better, they need me to pick one of them, today. I will not do it, I know that is what they want, but I am not going to let either of them control the direction I take. The tension in the room was so thick it could have been cut with a knife. I can feel the hurt radiating off of Max, he is clearly upset at me for asking for time, but he pressed the issue when I was nicer about it earlier. I can also feel the anger and hurt coming off of Blake, as well. He is trying to control it, but he is so overwhelmed with it, that it just keeps seeping out of him. I will give you time, Cheryl, I am sorry for pushing you. You are right, I will give you more time to process everything. You are worth the wait for me, and I will be here for you whenever you are ready. Just let me know, as you already know where I will be Max said, as he tried to make a small doctor joke as he picked up his clipboard to leave my room. I refused to laugh. I am upset with him now. His mentioning me texting Anton made me very upset. I only text Anton when I am alone. Kevin doesn't even know about him yet. I didn't know if I needed to introduce them or wait to see how it went. But knowing that Max has been watching me from the hallway like that, makes me very uncomfortable, to say the least. Everyone else moved over to let him out, except Blake. Blake was about an inch taller than Max, and he made sure to take a deep breath in to expand his chest to try to intimidate Max. It didn't work, and Max gave him a smirk to let him know that he wasn't concerned about Blake. I do not allow myself to feel bad about what I said to either of them right now. I told Max as nicely as I could earlier, and he pressed the issue even further. He was the one who should know full well that I was not supposed to be stressed. What was he thinking? I can feel Blake's eyes on me, as he stepped into the room. I saw him smile at the two azalea plants that he had bought me earlier, and he put the new flower arraignment on the little rolling table next to the bed. I appreciate the flowers. He doesn't have to send them, but they are lovely. I thanked him again for the flowers and lay back on my bed and closed my eyes. I will pretend to be getting a nap, so he can just leave. I know that you are not asleep, Cheryl. I slept with you for fifteen years, I know the difference between you really sleeping and you being awake Blake tells me and the tone in his voice reminds me of all the times that we spent in our bed, knowing that our mate was awake, and needed comfort. Those moments were some of my most precious memories. Ones where he treasured me, and spent time showing me how well he knew me, in those early morning hours when it was just the two of us. Those days were long gone now, and I knew he was just trying to remind me that my time there at Black Moon was not always horrible. 
I heard another chair being brought into the room and sat down. I opened my eyes to see Justin with his hands still on the chair that was clearly brought in for Raven to sit in, and Blake is sitting in the one closest to my bed. Brandon nodded to me and then left after two warriors arrived to stand at my door. I could almost cry from the care that they are giving me when they truly didn't have to. I caused Brandon so many problems, and cost the pack so much, but they still took me in at my greatest time of need. Black Adder has my trust and support, we will both defend our pack as needed. I will make sure that I do my best for my Black Adder. Both Kevin and I are considered to be rogues, but as soon as I am cleared from the hospital they were going to hold a ceremony for us both to become members of Black Adder. Kevin can't wait to become official here. What do you want to say then, Blake? Just say your piece, and leave. I do not want Kevin to get upset if he finds out that you are here I told him in a low tone. We have an audience, Raven and Justin are both in the room, although Justin has gone to the far corner and is on his cell phone right now. I don't want to speak to Blake, but he did do a favor for us by allowing us to say what we needed to Graham, so I am sure he called in a favor to come and visit today. I wanted to let you know that I am so sorry for my actions. That I want you back. That I love you and would do anything for you Blake said. Or if you want to pay for more such audiobooks, you can send us a request in a private Facebook group, or join us on WhatsApp, a link is given in the video description. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode, join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.